What's up, folks? We're going to be talking about Spec Kit again today. I did not expect every day of the week to be recording a new video, but here we are. So there's just more good changes happening, and I wanted to share them. I'm going to skip through most of the setup. The stuff that you've seen before, the specify CLI, all the explanation of the constitution and the prompts, they're there. They're in the IDE. I use VS Code with Copilot. If you use your IDE of choice like Kilo or Roo or literally anything else, you're going to have your own specific setup. So here I went through the step already of setting up the constitution and setting up the spec with the slash specify command. So those things are done. It's set up. I have this artifact. I have my spec for my podcast website. Now, I've heard this from the community, both on YouTube and in GitHub and from internal folks at Microsoft that have been testing this, that one of the biggest problems that happens with the spec is what's known as under specification. And what that essentially means is that when you define a spec, you have a set of assumptions, but those assumptions are not really questioned, right? So you, you, you've set this up and you kind of look through the doc and you're like, all right, this sounds kind of good. And I will look through functional requirements and say that this is okay. This sounds good to me. But what if it actually is not good? Like there's items that need clarification, obviously, but there, maybe there's other items that seem ambiguous or maybe something that you kind of missed. For that, we just introduced, you can download the latest build, the latest templates too, by the way. So you can use slash clarify. Slash clarify is going to trigger the quizzing mode, if you will, in the model of choice that is essentially going to ask you questions about the spec. It's going to look at the spec and see if there's things that need clarification. Now, of course, this is not an objective assessment. This is essentially a tool that runs and the LLM itself is going to read through the file and get the metadata and look through the contents of the spec and then make an assessment of saying, oh, here's probably the things that need some uh, information. So we're going to see how this works, right? So it gives you a question. It's going to go through a maximum of five clarification questions. So in this case, it says what specific episode metadata should be displayed on the episode pages. And we explicitly told it to give us options. Now you, you can of course provide your own. So if you want to go and specify what this is, but I wanted to make this super, super simple. So if you look at the option and description, so I want to say C extend it. All you need to do is just say C It's the option C. That's it. That's all you need to do to clarify it. So it's going to record this in the spec as you go. So now it has a clarification. Notice that it logs the session. So you know, this is, it happened today. It logs the question. And then this is the answer. Don't mistake this with option A. This is not option A. This is the answer, right? It's so a question and answer. Now this is going to jump to the next question, which social sharing platforms should be supported for episode sharing. So I want to say maybe a just essential. So we're going to say a, all right, we're going to do that. And this interaction here is baked into the prompt. So when you do clarify, it's going to go one by one through these five questions or items that need clarification. You can, again, inspect the prompt. The prompt is a markdown file. It's defined there. So we're going to look here, and now it's asking, what are the specific perf requirements for load times? All right, let's do fast. This is the perf requirement. Easy enough, right? Again, I, I'm not typing any. I'm just giving it answers. There's Option A is good enough. Option B is good enough. That's the goal. The goal here is a smooth developer experience through which you can actually move through this fast, but at the same time, have an avenue to provide that information for things that might be under specified. And of course, question four, content requirement for the episode descriptions. Let's keep it brief as well. So let's do option A. And we see again, all the requirements are being explicitly logged in the specification. Not only that, but it's also reflected in the functional requirements. So we'll see that the functional requirements are being updated to also account for the things that we're doing, right? The spec is a living document. Remember that when we have a specification, the spec itself is a document that encompasses all the requirements for this feature. It's not just about the clarifications in the header that we just saw. It's about the clarifications in the, the items, the, the list here, right? And the last question is how should the website handle audio playback? And then, well, you know, let's do B, let's do progressive. Cause that sounds good. And great. So now we have this capture as well. The information and entities is updated. Now we are ready to move on to the next step, right? Like we'll see the summary here of the clarifications in just a second. And once this is done, once the spec is updated, we have the clarifications, we have the updates, I can move on to defining the technical plan. So previously you go from slash specify to slash plan to then slash tasks. Now you can go to slash specify 
You then slash clarify. You see, see what I did there? It's specify and clarify. It's very easy to remember. You don't have to do this, by the way. It's an optional step. Like you can completely bypass and go directly to technical plan. Or you can edit the markdown file manually if you so desire, if you're that adventurous. But this allows you this back and forth and avoid the problem of under specification, right? So we're going to keep these files and we're going to move on to the plan. And as you're watching this video, I'm going to fast track to the future. I'll see you in the future. God damn! All right, welcome back to the future. The work is done. We have our artifacts. We have our contracts, data model. Again, the stuff that you know about, you've seen this in multiple videos that I put together, but it's, it's there, believe me. So we have the spec, the technical plan, and a task. Now, what you can do is you use this command. It's called slash analyze. And you'll notice it's being referenced here. Slash analyze does a few important things. It analyzes the core files that you have, which is spec, technical implementation or technical details, right? The technical plan and the task breakdown. So that way it looks at them and it rationalizes that they all match and they all fit within the constitutional requirements that were put together for the constitution document. Remember the constitution is non-negotiable. The constitution is the document that is essential for the project guardrails. And we want to make sure that when the LLM operates on many different files, and it does this job relatively well, depending on the model that you're choosing, right? You're going to see things that are maybe inconsistent because it operates on many files. It's going to go and start spinning up a bunch of tasks and, you know, spinning up a bunch of technical plans that are not necessarily aligned. So once you start implementation, you start seeing things that are not quite aligned with what you initially were planning out. So, and kind of the analyze command is doing exactly this. It's analyzing and finding these discrepancies. So if we take a look here at what it's actually finding, it actually looked at our content at the spec analysis and it categorizes the discrepancies by severity, by its assessed severity. So here we have inconsistency and we have the summary project structure mismatch. Plan shows assets, pages, structure, but tasks use app components Next.js structure. So update plan to reflect actual Next.js project. Right, so uh, that's kind of important. We wanna make sure the data is consistent. So we have perf alignment, critical. Let's see, this is medium. So Next.js framework violates static HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript only constitutional requirement, either justify violation or return to vanilla approach. So again, these are the things that it, it helps you like we talked about under specification, right? Like under specification is a problem where you, you look at the problem and say, Okay, I have an idea of what I'm building. I have an idea of how this is going to go, but you have blind spots. So you're not necessarily sure. So clarify helps you spot this. Analyze in turn helps you spot these under specification or the spec violations, constitutional violations down the line as you embark on the journey of building this out, like right before implementation. This is critical. You have to do this. Now, is it an optional step in the, the toolkit? Absolutely. You don't actually need to run it, but I highly recommend doing this because that's how you spot these inconsistencies. And again, you get better output down the line because it matches the expectations that you set for the project. So this is a new thing that got introduced in the latest version of uh, spec kit. And as always, you can go to the uh, actual GitHub repository that we can show you in just a second. And just get it from there, right? Like we have all the releases, the releases are available right in our repo. So just go click here if you wanna get the templates. If you do not wanna get the templates, copy this command. Uh, just do this directly into your uh, kind of with, with your machine dev box. Uh, thank you Shane Boyer for helping update the documentation. So there is UV tool install if you wanna do this uh, in a way that install once and use it everywhere or use the UVX command that I've been using um, myself consistently because that's just is just easier and I, I like it that way. I'll also mention that there is now a new flag that we added. If you are using slash dash or dash dash here to bootstrap a project, you would usually get a prompt that says you might override the files. Are you sure you want to do this? So now you have force. And if you do the dash dash force, 
it'll actually automatically override all the files and place it in the current folder and not ask you. So again, kind of a neat thing to do if you're running this in a environment we do not want to have interactive prompts. But this is it, this is spec kit. More improvements coming. I will make sure to see you in the next video. Leave your feedback in the comments, the GitHub repo. We're triaging this daily. I'll see you soon.